Hello and welcome to today's webinar on extensions in Oracle Applications Cloud. What can you do? Hosted by Deborah Lilly. We thank you for taking the time to attend and I know that you will find this time useful. Um, for those that didn't hear earlier, my name is Hayden and I work with UK Oracle User Group to deliver our webinars and events such as this one. <clears throat> Today, we are extremely grateful to welcome Deborah, our host and Associate Di Director from Accenture. Should you wish to get in contact with Deborah, her email is on the screen at the moment and will be at different points throughout the webinar. I'll also send the, her contact details in a post-event email as well. Um, before we get started, I wanted to share a bit about what us as UK Oracle User Group do to support you all, our community. Now, we deliver content through webinars, meetups, events, and conferences relating all to Oracle applications and technologies. So whether it's a problem with one of the technologies you're using, a latest update, or to make better informed decisions when deciding your journey, we as your community can help. Being independent from Oracle means we deliver unbiased content and can provide honest solutions to your problems. On average, we throw around 50 events a year. We have uh, just under 700 organizations as members and have over 750 resources for you to use at your leisure. Um, whether you want to meet like-minded individuals, hear from the experts or put forward content to help others, we are the user group for you. Um, just to highlight some of the uh, upcoming events we have, um, next up is our annual Oracle User Group Scotland event, which is next week. We will be hosting six streams of content, including sessions on database, middleware and development, Apex, business analytics, cloud, and on-premise. I have highlighted some of the sessions that may be of interest to you on the screen, but if you wish to view the full agenda, you can just use the link at the bottom left of the screen. Next up, we have our Applications Unlimited event, which is uh, in Reading on the 18th and 19th of June. We're having four streams of content over two days, including EBS, JD Edwards, Transitioning to Cloud, Hyperion, and Apps Tech. Again, I've highlighted a couple of sessions that may be of interest to you, and the link to register is at the bottom of the screen. Um, I will include both of these in the post event email as well, so you can have a good look for yourselves and see if you would be interested in attending. Um, if you'd like to know more about membership or what other events we have got coming up throughout the year, then please don't hesitate in getting in contact with me. My email is at the bottom hand of the screen. However, again, you'll receive an email from me, so you can just respond to that. Now, quickly before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping. Um, Deborah will be taking questions at the end. However, if you want to just pop any questions you have throughout in the question box and send that through, that will come through to me and I will get those to Deborah once she's finished presenting. Again, if you're unable to hear or see the screen, please do just type into the question box. I can't hear, I can't see, and I will do my best to try and fix the problem for you. Um, I, will, I have been informed that the slides for this presentation will be available, so I will include these in the post-event email for you to review and send to your peers and colleagues as well. Without further ado, I shall pass over to Deborah. Bear with me. Wonderful, I can see that clearly, Deborah. Thank you. Okay, over to me. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep, it's crystal clear. Good. Okay, um, well, just following up from what was said, um, this is a presentation that I've given quite a few times now, and it, every time I give the presentation, there's more to add. Um, with everything in Oracle, it's always moving. So I just give that as a, a little bit of a warning for people when you download the, the slides, etc. cetera. Um, it's as of today, uh, the Oracle product portfolio is constantly, it's very, very dynamic. Um, also, this is a, a, a presentation that takes um, 
takes the answers from Oracle and and I suppose peels them back a bit. Uh, I believe that part of my job is to take a, a, a concept that you hear about in marketing or in pre-sales and peel that back to understand more about how that actually works. And my user group hat, my ACE director hat, is, is about then sharing that knowledge. So hopefully by the end of this session, um, you'll have some things to think about uh, for extending. So the abstract says, this is SAS, so you can't change it. Um, that was definitely the message. Uh, SAS cannot be customized. Um, don't confuse that with configuration. There's lots of configuration you can do, but you can't customize it. But what we can do is extend it. And so this presentation is, is about that and about your options and the things to consider. So um, as was said, my name is Deborah Lilly. Um, I'm an associate director at Accenture. Um, I think the scary thing in this list is that I've been working with Oracle applications since 1996. For those of you with an e-business suite background, that's um, version 9.4.1. So quite a long time ago. Um, and to me, the, the thing that I um, am very proud of is that during the long development phase of the Fusion applications, I represented user groups worldwide um, on our input into Fusion. And that has given me an absolutely unrivaled um, network within Oracle development and access to them. And at every stage of my career and at every stage of these investigations, I've had nothing but help from Oracle. Um, and uh, it, it's just been invaluable to me. So I live in Northern Ireland. Um, I'm guessing that most people on this webcast are from the UK. Um, so I live just above that most talked about border at the moment. Um, but actually, that's where I'd rather be. I'd rather be under the sea. Um, and I just had a lovely diving holiday. So it's back to work now, I suppose. So uh, just to clear up um, uh, who I work for, I worked for Certus. Um, last year, Certus were acquired by Accenture, and from the 1st of June, um, no, 1st of May, uh, we dropped the part of Accenture and we are now all just Accenture. So, just to clear that up. Okay, so a couple of definitions first. Um, PAS for SAS, which is really what we're talking about here. Um, this is the, the terminology that Oracle use. Um, to talk about how uh, about PaaS, which is their development suite in the cloud. So uh, everything from the database up to and including um, some of the building blocks that we see all of the time, like analytics, etc. All of those are PaaS components in the cloud. Uh, software as a service, that's the applications. Um, I'm particularly focused on the Fusion ones, and I'll just clear that up for you. Um, anyone who follows my blog will know that I was a very big advocate of dropping the name Fusion. Um, I even held workshops where you were fined if you said Fusion and that paid for the coffee for the whole group. Um, but last year, Larry Ellison went back to calling it Fusion. So if it's good enough for Larry, it's good enough for me. And PAS for SAS is the creating your own applications using the PaaS platform to extend Oracle's Fusion applications. So that's what we're looking at today. Um, I've done a lot of videos around this and um, in the uh, pack, there will be the links there for that. In fact, I'll extend them out to the actual URLs because I know that sometimes um, the PDF doesn't actually allow you to link on it. So I'll change that before I send the slides through. Um, this is probably my most recent video about it. Uh, I think some of the, the, the issues around PaaS that I have is that 
it's referred to by Oracle as if it's one product. So they say, oh yes, that's part of our PaaS. Okay. Um, also, and this is a bit tongue in cheek, but when I started my consultancy career, I remember going to a project and there was a requirement from the customer and the answer said, using a innovative combination of flex fields and discoverer, we will solve this requirement. And I asked the salesman, what did that mean? And he said, that's up to you. That was my job to find it. Okay. That's a bit tongue in cheek and it's a very specific example, but it was a standard answer for where there was functionality that didn't come out of the box and needed some thought in it. And today I see that in Fusion apps. When there's a piece of functionality that a customer needs, the answer is you can use PaaS for that. Right? Bit of a glib statement. And my point is that's probably true. We probably can solve every requirement using PaaS. The question is which bit and how do you approach it? So that's hopefully what we're going to have a look at today. So Oracle talks about um, PaaS being the ability to build your own applications. They talk about it from an ISV point of view. So that's as a supplier writing applications that they're going to sell that's underpinned by Oracle technology. Um, Oracle has a marketplace that you can sell those applications under. Um, it's not as rich and as varied as some of the other app stores, but I think that's just because people haven't got round to, to using that as a marketplace, but they do have one. And I'm going to talk about one of those examples later. The other use um, for PaaS for SaaS is the one we're looking at, which is the extending. Um, and as I've said, Fusion Architecture Principles means that extensions are not a customization. They sit alongside separately and they're integrated the same way as any coexistence you would do with traditional apps. So let's just define that again. And, and I'm, I apologize if all of this is like teaching you to suck eggs, but these are the, the, the areas where over and over again, I find that people don't quite understand the nuances here. So coexistence is something that Oracle have talked about a long time for their cloud applications. This is where you're running more than one app together. Um, that doesn't have to be just running Fusion alongside your eBusiness suite or alongside your PeopleSoft. It can be any other application you've got. For instance, it might be that you use a third party payroll with Oracle HR and you want them to run as seamlessly as possible together. And we have integration that allows you to do that. So that's coexistence. And when you're talking about extending those applications with PaaS, what you're talking about is creating your own little app and running that in coexistence with Fusion in the same way as with any other app that you might have done. Okay, now integration is also PaaS, but that's a whole other presentation. It's a whole other topic. I'm not going to talk about integration today, um, apart from a very simple menu integration. Um, but I am going to talk about the things that you need to consider and the tools that you can use. So first of all, the whole premise of my presentation is that I really like the Fusion applications and I love the way, the look and feel of them, the user interface, the user experience that people have um, for the information. So I'm committed that any extension I write will have that same user interface, um, albeit it was called the simplified UI. We've now got a new speed um, UX as well. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I want my end user to be using the extension in the same way they use the main application. And in most cases, I don't want them to know that they're in an extension. What is the point of your organization spending the amount of money it costs on a new application suite um, where part of the business case is the ease of use 
that simplified UI. If you then turn around and say, hey, we're going to add some bits on the sides and they're going to look completely different. We don't want that. OK, so um, I'm committed to making sure um, that the, 